We now move to questions to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. I must inform the House that questions 6, 7, 12 and 13 have been withdrawn. I call Ms Anna Lowe. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number one, please. I thank the member for her question, and she will now be aware that I have been able to reinstate the Arts Council's budget because of a successful uh, bid for additional funds in the November monitoring. This will enable the Arts Council to reinstate 620,000 uh, in cuts that it planned to make to 32 arts organisations. For the same reason, I have also been able to reverse uh, cuts to Sports Council, and this will also allow some uh, support and flexibility and help preserve its grant. Uh, while I am, and I am sure the members are pleased with this, we should, however, bear in mind in the, what the wider context is, and certainly the cuts imposed by the Westminster Government have reduced the executive's budget uh, very significantly. And DECAL, uh, for me, I started with almost 10% uh, less than I did last year. The budget redeployment exercise was required to address a number of pressure, pressures which had arisen in my department. Uh, and I firmly place that uh, at the feet of the Westminster Government. Call Ms. Lowe for a supplementary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, uh, that's honey. I want to thank the Minister for her response and, and welcome the reinstating of money to the arts yeah. sector. But um, the uh, failure has been given 550,000 from DECAL through a cultural programme funding stream over the last two years, but it would seem there was not a lot of transparency on how the money was distri uh, distributed. Can I ask the Minister, what was that application process? Was there an application panel? Was there any evaluation of the output and a proper postcode breakdown of the beneficiaries to establish that the money is definitely reaching those in disadvantaged areas, as she claimed. Well, I take exception to the fact that the member is actually accusing me of a lack of transparency. I think, I think that's regrettable. Uh, and I think it's regrettable that the member has chosen to single out Philly and Fubble when other organisations in the provision of arts and culture receive tens of millions of pounds more. The process was Philly and Fubble lobbied the Tourist Board, the lobbied Belfast City Council, my department on World Police and Fire Games uh, in 2013 to be cultural partners with a bigger pot of money. Year in, year from that, they have brought in more cultural partners with less money. They are open and transparent about what they all do, including within the members' own constituency. Uh, and I think maybe just to try and clear some of the confusion up, uh, it would be good if the member could actually meet Felia and all the, some of the other partners in that partnership to talk about their work, and they do indeed reach those who are most deprived and most disadvantaged and marginalised within this community. Call Mr. William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for answer so far. Can I welcome the funding to the arts sector, funding which didn't come from Tory cuts but from Sinn Féin cuts. In terms of the money was withdrawn from the Arts Council for Northern Ireland. £900,000 transferred to the Minister's pet project, LIFA. Can I ask the Minister what is she doing to reinstate the money? to marching bands, the £100,000 that was taken away, because the Minister did promise to bring it back on a monitoring round. Well, I think it's regrettable that the member still chooses and chooses to be offensive towards the Irish language, but I really have come to expect nothing else from him and some of his party colleagues. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that the member is also in denial about Tory cuts, uh, given the fact that even in his constituency, which is one of the most deprived. He is in denial about the impacts of Tory cuts to people who are really deprived. It would be more in keeping if the member actually asked a question that would benefit his constituents. But I, I, I agree it's his prerogative to ask whatever question he likes, and it is my prerogative to answer the question in whatever fashion I like also. Call Mr. Kakaloshin. Uh, can the Minister outline what support the arts has received to, since she has taken the decal portfolio? Well, certainly in the region of uh, £75 million has been given uh, to arts. I have supported major capital projects that I have mentioned actually yesterday in the launch of the consultation into the new arts and cultural strategy. 
uh, capital monies to the Lyric and to the MAC as well, as well as funding very, very good uh, and specialised work for Wheelworks Art Cart, which actually goes out and about in a, in a mobile van and delivers arts uh, and digital uh, artistic uh, services to communities. Certainly, even in the member, Mr Humphrey's constituency, uh, £400,000 for the big carnival pre premises in the Lower Shankill, and certainly supported, well, it's west when it suits and it's north when it doesn't. <laughs> so talk about being confused. I'm glad the member has clarified that the Shankill is now in West Belfast. OK, thank you for that. And certainly in Cattle Hushing's own constituency, the member will be aware of the money we invested, certainly in terms of the City of Culture and indeed its legacy programme. Call Mr Jonathan Craig. Question number two, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker. I thank the member for his question. D. Callan Sport and I have been able to provide both practical and financial support to established boxing clubs across the north, including boxing clubs outside Belfast. This has been achieved through Sport NI's boxing investment programme, which will see the lottery funding of over £3.2 million invested across the sport. In addition to this, under the City of Culture Legacy programme, my department has invested in a further £1 million for boxing in Derry. The aims of the Boxing Investment Programme are to help the sport to address the needs of boxing clubs around club development and sustainability, the provision of suitable facilities and the provision of boxing equipment. A club development manager has now worked with a large number of clubs and has enabled them to meet also governance standards. 94 clubs have received a range of boxing equipment volume £170,000 and £2.5 million have been allocated to take forward capital works for the premises of 40 boxing clubs, 20 of which are based outside Belfast. Mr Craig, for a supplementary. Well, thank you, Minister, for your answer there. And it's good to see that Londonderry is getting £30 million. Um, uh, Minister, with regard to small boxing clubs, and there is a couple of small boxing clubs in my own uh, constituency, their ongoing running costs are always an issue. Would the Minister support proposals, hopefully coming forward from the Finance Minister, to make them rates free, because the running costs of a lot of these clubs are where the problems lie for them? Well, I thank the member for his question. Just to clarify, it was £1 million given to Derry, not £30 million. I'm sure there's a lot of people in Derry getting very excited, but sorry just to quash, quash that rumour. I, I do believe it is important that small clubs and indeed, sporting clubs do receive some support. It is regrettable that the members' party couldn't support the bill of that nature. However, it is, it is important, particularly given areas that are doing a lot of outreach, outreach work with children and young people who are keeping them safe and healthy, do get support from government. I admire the work that a lot of sporting clubs do, particularly boxing. I believe now the sport is trying to attract more women and certainly children with all abilities. Uh, to the sport, and I think it's right and proper that government gives in turn support to the clubs. Call Mr. Oliver McMullen. Oh my God. Can, can the minister tell us how, how can DCAL help the boxing clubs who will not receive the boxing investment programme funding at this, this stage? Very my God. Well, I thank the member for a supplementary question, and I do recognise uh, from the outset that the lottery funding, albeit over three million would certainly not be enough to address the need out there, particularly for a sport that, in my opinion, and I have visited many of the boxing clubs right across the north, some of the conditions in the clubs are not fit for purpose, despite the excellent work that they do. So the 3.2 million from Sport NI's lottery fund isn't enough. But that said, Sport NI are currently working with a number of organisations and certainly with my department and other departments, including DSD as an example, and indeed some of the district councils, we're trying to work with the clubs to try and ensure that there is an opportunity, because some of the clubs need small amounts of money while others need much more. For the clubs who need small amounts of money, that there's a potential when departments and indeed councils and other bodies come together, because this is the difference between some of the clubs having a viable project and others who simply are stuck in between a department giving them funding and another department can't give them much funding. Well, Ms. Karen McEvitt. 
Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her answers uh, thus far. Um, Minister, just in the middle of November, I think it was around the 12th, um, the Ulster League Boxing Championships were held in Newry, where I got an opportunity uh, to go um, to see the, 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 um, the boxing. And indeed, uh, a couple of women boxers, probably for my first time, other than seeing Katie Taylor uh, boxing um, for Ireland on TV. But could the Minister um, outline to the House um, what will Sport NI and her department do to ensure that boxing clubs are female friendly zones um, and offer opportunity for females uh, to develop their boxing skills? Well, certainly, if I, I, mean, I agree with the member, it, it is, it's good to see children uh, of all backgrounds, genders get involved in sport, particularly boxing, which has been predominantly male uh, for decades, but certainly it's very open and trying to be as inclusive as possible. Um, but certainly through the Sports Matters strategy, the inclusion of women in a few sports and boxing is one of them. We need to do much more, uh, but I believe certainly the Ulster Council for Boxing and indeed the county boards, so not all, but some of the county boards have actually went out of their way to try and include uh, more women in the sport. I also believe that with proper facilities it will actually help encourage uh, young women in the sport as well. And I also, the most important thing, I think attitudes have changed. I think Katie Taylor and others uh, have been great role models and they'll certainly help bring more women to the sport as well. Call Mr. Michael Majimsey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, in view of her, of her answers this, uh, this afternoon, and in particular the money that's available under her boxing strategy, uh, one of the best established boxing clubs in Belfast is acknowledged to be Sandy Row Boxing Club. How much money has Sandy Row Boxing Club uh, received out of the, uh, uh, the millions through this strategy? Well, the members asked me this question uh, a lot, and he'll get the same answer. This money and this investment is for clubs who are affiliated to the Irish Amateur Box Association in receipt, in receipt of a letter of offer. I understand Sandy Row Boxing Club will receive money from Belfast City Council and others, but they understand full well the rules in which the funding and the application process happens. And what the members should do is encourage them to get the much needed investment they need rather than sectarianising and politicising this. Call Mr. Jim Mollister. Why does the Minister continue to punish clubs which, for very good reason, refuse to reaffiliate to an IBA within which they have suffered sectarian abuse? Well, I don't punish anyone. The rules are very clear, and people quite clearly understand those rules. I think it would be more fitting for, for politicians like yourself and indeed like Mr Majimsey to try and give the club support because it's those clubs who are working with the children all the time and rather, and rather than use piggybacking on those clubs what you should do is help them and give them assistance to get the much needed funding. I'm absolutely open to help on those clubs. I have asked to go out and see those clubs. I have written to those clubs. And I have went and seen clubs across the whole of the North, including predominantly working class loyalist areas. But I believe the actions of some of the unionist politicians around this issue has been nothing short of pathetic. Call Mr. Adrian Cochrane Watson. Question number three. I thank the member for his question. I can advise that my department has had no discussions to date regarding this matter. The establishment of a fans' embassies would be something that the Irish Football Association, in association with the Northern Ireland supporters' representatives, may consider necessary at suitable venues in France for the 2016 European Partners Championships. I would be supportive of the establishment of a fans' embassies to provide travel advice, local information and assistance for fans. Any measures that can be taken to help to ensure the fans have a safe and enjoyable experience at the championships are worthy of consideration. Mr. Cochrane Watson for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal, uh, Deputy Speaker. Disappointed, Minister, by your response, I think, in view of the terrible events in Paris 10 days ago, I think the DECAL should be stepping up to the mark here, both financially and operationally, to give true assistance to the many thousands of British football tourists who will be visiting France. And I also hope maybe today you could outline how DECAL plan to celebrate the success of the, our national football team in reaching these championships as well. Um, the silence from yourself has been quite deafening to date. 
I know the member is new to the House, but it's normally customary that the Minister waits on a member finishing his question before answering. Uh, and given the fact that it is primarily, primarily the, a matter for the Irish Football Association, I have been very open in trying to assist where possible. I have provided the Irish Football Association with money in addition to provision of capital monies as well. Uh, Sport and I are indeed helping the Irish Football Association and indeed uh, the Northern Ireland team and many other teams who are competing in championships support. So if there's, the member has a particular suggestion that he thinks I need to do something specific, I'm more than happy to receive any uh, representation from him or anyone else for that matter. Call Mr Gregory Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I uh, appreciate it's some time until the actual championships next summer uh, and uh, diaries are, are not yet filling up. But is it the Minister's intention, diaries permitting, that she will actually be in attendance in France at the football championships and maybe change the habit of a lifetime and actually support Northern Ireland? Um. I think the member's question is disappointing, but certainly not surprising. He's, con he's, he's, he's been consistently, he's been consistently negative. I won't be the minister in 2016, but certainly I'm happy to support the team. I'm happy to support all the teams in this island. I think it would be much better if the member stopped politicising this issue. I have been to Northern Ireland Games on several occasions and given my support. I didn't see the member there. Call Mr. Fergal McKinney. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, uh, I, I too would have concerns following the recent uh, uh, Paris atrocities that, uh, uh, that enough should be done uh, in terms of working with the IFA to make sure that fans get uh, proper advice. Uh, around travelling, but um, rather than getting to the stadium in France yet, would the minister consider inviting both teams uh, to here for a special event to acknowledge uh, the, uh, both teams uh, accessing the tournament? Well, certainly, the, every year uh, there is an annual uh, event which Decal sponsor, inviting all the teams, including big national teams as well as some of the small clubs who have achieved. That happens every year. The member will not be surprised that I get hundreds of requests to host receptions here. So it will be in March, early March next year, where not only the Northern Ireland team will be invited, uh, all the teams in Ireland will be invited because most of them are part of national governing bodies. Uh, but certainly in relation to the first point that he made, certainly in, the, in relation to the, the events of the 13th, of this month in Paris. Um, I know that UEFA have been contacted by many national teams about arrangements for the championships next year. I am happy when I get an update. I will share that with all members of the House, because I appreciate that members are concerned. Call Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. The success and achievements of the Northern Irish football team have inspired and united this community, uh, I'm glad to say. Uh, and I, I thank the, the Minister for acknowledging that and for her, her uh, agreement that the fans' embassies will be an important source of advice for fans in France. Um, would, would the Minister be willing to meet with a, a delegation from the, the IFA and the uh, amalgamation of official Northern Ireland Supporters Club to review how further she might be able to help the success of those fans' embassies? I thank the member for a supplementary question and indeed for his comments. I'm happy to meet. I have met delegations from I meet the IFA on a regular basis, but certainly happy to meet uh, with the member and delegations of the Supporters Club along with the IFA. Happy to bring Sport NI and anyone else. Uh, that we need to ensure, first of all, that this is the start of a process, but as well as that, and more importantly than that, that uh, everything that we can do as a collective can be done. Call Mr. Trevor Clark. I thank the member for his question. My department's fisheries protection officers assist with the Northern Ireland Environment Agency with the investigation of pollution incidents that involve fish kills by collecting, counting, and recording the fish species and sizes that have been killed. This data may be used as evidence in prosecution cases should the offender be identified, and as a consequence, all or some of the dead fish may be retained as physical evidence. In some instances, a sample 
of a number of dead fish may be sent to Agri-Food, Biosciences Institute, AFBI, Veterinary Sciences in an attempt to identify the cause. And where there is suspicion that fish disease may be a factor, DARD Fish Health is notified as the competent authority for aquatic animal health and a sample of fish may be submitted for testing on the instruction of DARD. Well, Mr. Clark for supplementary. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for that answer. I'm sure, Minister, you'll be surprised as I wasn't even given the answer. You're saying in some cases samples are taken from those fish or tests are done. Um, can the Minister give us an assurance that maybe she would actually ask our officials to look at that? Given the number of uh, incidents, particularly in the Six Mile Water and in the Three Mile Burn in my constituency or indeed anywhere in Northern Ireland, that the work that her department does is instrumental in actually in trying to find the source. But one of, those would, one of those ways obviously would be to actually test all the fish, to actually see what actually killed those, and to see if we can identify those polluters and bring them before the courts. Well, certainly um, the issue, particularly around the causes of fish kills, particularly the members' consistency in recent times, my, uh, uh, my understanding is that all samples have been taken, particularly when there's an, an issue of reoccurrent uh, fish kills in an, in an area. Uh, and indeed, uh, my understanding is, and I will certainly qu query this, is that the samples are taken, uh, particularly when there's been uh, a fish kill uh, taken in different parts of the river to ensure that if it's one cause, that cause can be identified. So maybe the answer wasn't reflective of actually what's done, but I'd certainly get the information from the member, because I know even through representation from him through meetings and from, from correspondence, this is an issue that he and indeed my own colleagues in that area, but certainly the Anglin clubs are very keen to get their bottom off. Well, Mr Sean Roger. Thanks, Minister, for your answer. Minister, could you tell me in terms of your department, does the department comply with all EU regulations with respect to the protection of fish? To the best of my knowledge, the answer is as short as yes. Uh, well, Mr Sean Lynch. Has the Minister's dep Department any form of agreement with other agencies and departments regarding pollutant incidents? As outlined, we do have a formal agreement with the Environment Agency, and they are the lead, par the, the lead party, lead agency with responsibility for investigation of water pollution. Uh, and the Department has also agreed a memorandum of understanding on the response to pollution incidents where fish um, are killed uh, with the Environment Agency as well. Um, we are certainly looking at a framework with the Agency for Cooperation and Implementation of Respective Statutory Duties. Um, certainly DECAL, under the 1966 Fishing Act, uh, have a power to prosecute those causing pollution and fishing, uh, particularly in waters, uh, but in most cases this is taken forward by the Environment Agency. So the MOU uh, and the framework that's taken forward is trying to ensure that as much as that can be done when incidents like this occur is done. Call Mr George Robinson. Question 5, Mr Principal Deputy, Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for his question. The decision to reduce the opening hours of Lima Valley Library was taken in accordance with Library's NI new opening hours policy, which comes into effect this month. It is regrettable that library opening hours have reduced across the north. However, the new policy will help to ensure that all libraries, including Limavati, will remain open and will not need to close. While I appreciate that social deprivation affects many areas across the north, including Limavati, libraries and I have made it clear in its review of, review of opening hours consultation that libraries serving areas ex experiencing uh, substantial levels of deprivation would be guaranteed protection from a greater than from the greater 10 percent uh, of the top 10 percent of most deprived hours and reduction in their open hours. Deprivation is determined using the published NI multiple deprivation measure 2010. On the basis of that measure, the open and hours policy has prioritised li libraries serving three or more super outputs areas. Mr. Robinson, for supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pr Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, considering that the Lima Valley area has three areas of high social deprivation and a large rural hinterland, surely this should warrant a reconsideration of Lima Valley Library opening hours? Well, 
Libraries A&I have information that it does not serve three or more super output series, and in fact, Limavati, even in comparison to Dungiven, is open 40 hours, where Dungiven is open 25 hours. Um, so I think the consideration taken by Libraries A&I to the Library and the Members' constituency in this uh, situation is completely appropriate. Ms. Can I ask the Minister how many and which libraries currently meet the Libraries NI criteria as serving areas of substantial social depri deprivation? Thank the Member for a supplementary. Um, and the Member will be aware of most of the constituencies that fall within the top 10 per cent of most deprived. But certainly there are 12 areas. They are based in Ardoyne, Chester, Colin Glen. Craigan in the Derry, Falls Road in West Belfast, Hollywood Arches, The Shankill, Chantallo in Derry, Suffolk, Waterside, White Rock and Woodstock Libraries. Call Mr John Dallin. I thank the, the Minister for her answer. The Minister, of course, will be aware that libraries in Ireland have a very rich tradition and following the famine were instrumental in giving people an opportunity to learn to read and write. Minister also be aware that there's a quarter of a million people today in Northern Ireland who can't read or write. Given that there are now additional resources, will the Minister review her uh, approach to the libraries and give them the sustainability that they need to address the needs of our people, whether they're those who have problems with literacy and numeracy or simply read for enjoyment? Thank the member for supplementary, and he will also know that from all the decal ALBs, I have given the most protection to libraries. Uh, I, I know it is disappointing when libraries' hours are reduced, but I have done my best to ensure that no library has closed as a result of the, the block grant being cut. Um, but certainly, it, even in the member's own constituency, um, there, there has been a groundswell support for the local libraries. Membership to those libraries has increased. I think it will help the viability and sustainability of libraries. And as a member and other members will know, that libraries is more than just about borrowing books. As he has outlined, there is support there around literacy, numeracy, mental health, support for children, support for families with homework, and much, much more besides. So I, I, I am glad that we at least enjoy cross-party support for our libraries. Call Mrs. Sandra Overend. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And I'd really just like to, to tease out will the Minister advise how she will deploy further library uh, monies granted in last week's wandering round? Well, certainly there was money given back to libraries, particularly to help them with stock, because that was part of their acute um, uh, service and their need. So that's, that's, that's been brought back. Um, and I do uh, again appeal to people for cross party support for our libraries because they are a valuable service, and particularly in rural communities. Once libraries are gone, it's very difficult for them to come back. Call Mr. Leslie Cree. Yes, Mr. Principal, be speaker. Thank the member for his question. As a result of Tory party cuts, my department began this year with less than 10 per cent in its resource budget, and in addition, the capital allocation for the stated programme was reduced to nil. In managing the resource budget cut, I have offered libraries some protection, of, as I have just outlined, because of the central role they play in local communities, both urban and rural. This inevitably, inevitably meant greater pressures elsewhere of over 11 per cent, both in AL, ALB budgets and within decals. I insisted that all business areas minimise the effects of these cuts on services and reducing the overheads in the first instance. This was helped by this, the establishment of the voluntary asset scheme, which around 60 people from within my department in the ALBs um, will be taken uh, up this year. It is, of course, impossible to shield the wider community from Tory cuts and, indeed, from the cuts to frontline services. DECAL have been affected and uh, we have been impacted and manifested in reductions of opening times in museums and libraries is one example, as well as bigger reductions in terms of arts sports. Mr Cree, for a supplementary, and I ask the member to be quick. Thank you. I certainly will. I uh, thank the Minister for that. Minister, you will remember that you advised the Committee recently that £610,000 would be included uh, in your bids for the gene monitoring for depreciation. The Finance Minister told us here last week that some £24.4 million, which I was ring-fenced, resource Dell couldn't be reallocated because it was for 
depreciation and impairments. Did you get that sense, 610,000? And if not, why not? Well, certainly um, the finance minister uh, in fairness to her did try to uh, reverse some of the impacts of my budget. Unfortunately, not all the, all the asks that I, or all the bids that I made could be met in this monitoring round, but certainly we're working with officials and DFP to try and have those met in future monitoring rounds. That ends the period for listed questions. We move to topical questions. Mr David McNary is not in his place. I call Mr Paul Given. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask the Minister, would she uh, request the Arts Council to review its decision in the future to fund uh, the Outburst Queer Arts Festival following the uh, screening of a play entitled The Gospel According to Jesus, Queen of Heaven? Uh, in light of the criticism that came in from uh, the mainstream Christian denominations and indeed a protest that was held by uh, the Catholic uh, constituency when this was screened, uh, bearing in mind the Minister's responsibility to promote good relations and also that religious belief is a Section 75 group? Well, certainly I won't be writing to the Arts Council to ask them to review their decision. I don't believe in censorship in any form. I do think it's regrettable that people have been offended, but certainly it's not my job to intervene in, in the Arts Council to have them reverse this decision. Mr Kevin, for supplementary. In light of the decision to have the Lord's Prayer banned because it is deemed to be offensive uh, to people who aren't Christians, can the Minister not recognise why Christians in this part uh, of Northern Ireland believe that they are subject to unwarranted attack for their genuinely and sincerely held beliefs? And therefore, is it necessary for the LGBT community in promoting their own identity to be offensive to people of faith? I don't believe anyone should be offensive to anyone of faith, but I also believe that people of faith don't have a veto over other people's rights and beliefs. I don't support the member's position in terms of uh, uh, persecution to Christians in this country. I believe that um, religious and civil freedom and liberties, with that comes responsibility. But certainly I wouldn't support anyone criticising or abusing anyone's belief, regardless should that be political or religious. I couldn't support that at all. Call Ms Bronwyn McGoggin. Gurmayoga, can, can I ask the Minister to, to detail how a club who was unsuccessful uh, in their application for funding from Sports NA get feedback? Is, is there a process established uh, in Sports NA for this? Well, certainly I, I have uh, received this uh, request on many occasions recently because some of the clubs who weren't successful and some of the rounds of capital funding from Sport NA have asked. The short answer is yes, there are processes there. Some clubs want a very detailed feedback and they're entitled to that. And I would suggest if that's the case in terms of the member, or even if people just want some feedback to help with future applications, clubs in the first instance should contact Sport NI. And if they want that done person to person, they should state that. Other clubs I know were happy to have feedback over a phone and others demanded a much more rigorous process. But there is a process there nonetheless in Sport NI. Ms McGuckin for a supplementary. and I thank the Minister for her response and I do look forward to any clarification that you can bring to ensure that unsuccessful groups get feedback from Sports NA, you know, as it is important that they can correct and amend their work and going forward. I totally agree with the member, particularly for some of the smaller clubs or some of the clubs who don't have as much financial uh, flexibility to try and buy in consultants. It's important for them, many of which are managed on a voluntary basis, to get as much detailed feedback as possible, particularly when they're going forward. Because I'm sure the needs and the rationale and the reasons for putting in the application haven't changed. So it is important that they get as much feedback as possible. Um, and I know the Minister shares with me our, my concern, and indeed this House concern, about the lack of women. Um, in public bodies through the public appointment um, process. Indeed, this week on Thursday and Friday at the North South Interparliamentary, uh, we will be discussing issues like this. But I wonder, would the Minister outline what uh, she has done uh, to ensure gender balance and also representation for disability groups on boards through public appointments? 
Well, I do share the member's concern and have shared the member's concern for some time now. I mean, when I went into the department in 2011, uh, there was less than 30 per cent, much less than 30 per cent of particularly women represented in the, the public appointments process. It's now gone up to 36 per cent. It's still not good enough, in my opinion. I have met with previous commissioners for public appointments uh, and asked them how to make the process more open uh, and more attractive to particularly women and people with disabilities. Um, I continue to seek advice from the Public Appointments Commissioner and others. Uh, and if the member or anyone else has any additional information or even suggestions or, or advice how I would you know, take that forward in the future, I'm open to hearing from the member and others. Ms. Ryan for a supplementary. Well, down by Kostanara and Frag I thank the Minister for her answer and I welcome the increase, um, but note still that obviously we need to do more. Um, the, the Minister will be pleased, I'd say, to hear that the, uh, the new uh, public appointments um, Commissioner will actually be speaking at the North South Interparliamentary. She's travelling down to Dublin and we obviously will be working with her. But will the Minister continue her efforts to ensure that we continue uh, representation? I absolutely will continue my efforts and part of the efforts in the past that I didn't say initially, but certainly part of the efforts was actually changing the way in which the application process happened, actually encouraging people to seek advice before they put an application in. Um, and certainly working with the Public Appointments Commissioner and indeed other bodies to try and make it easy. I look forward to a report coming out of that meeting and certainly look forward to any advice that I can take to ensure that there's more openness and transparency and better representation on our public bodies. Call Mr Edwin Poots. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, what uh, proposals has uh, the Minister uh, for capital support for junior and amateur fo football? Well, certainly the member may be aware of the application process that Sport and I have started around capital funding, and that's from lottery funds. In the very short time, I will be uh, announcing a consultation process into the sub-regional, and certainly some of the bigger clubs who have got junior leagues and junior clubs attached to them will be keen to uh, participate in that. As well as that, the IFA have received money from DECAL to ensure not only the inclusion of junior football, I've also received money from Sport and I for this, but also to include, to ensure that young girls are included in this as well. well we know you've been saying this for some time, Minister, so we would like to see, see it moving forward. Uh, given that we have, a, 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 in my constituency, um, a whole series of, of football clubs at a junior level, um, can the Minister give an assurance that they will have the opportunity uh, to apply for facilities such as changing rooms, um, stands, uh, pitch improvements, etc. Well, I, I can't give the member that assurance because, as the member will know, or maybe maybe he, he wasn't aware when it was agreed at the executive. But the, sec, the, the second phase, of the soccer money for sub-regional, is for bigger soccer clubs, um, and certainly in terms of junior clubs, the member should direct those clubs to Sport NI. I mean, that is the the perfect place for those clubs to apply funding to. And indeed, you know, if he feels that uh, they're, they're not given or they're not getting enough information from Sport and I, or indeed even from the local council, I would be happy to hear what those details are. Mr. Trevor Lund is not in his place. I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, last week um, there was a number of very successful events held in East Belfast as part of the CS Lewis Festival. Would the Minister agree with me that those are the sort of nations that we should be supporting at a local level, involving children, young people and, in fact, uh, a lot of elderly people as well? I absolutely do agree, um, and I believe the festival, indeed, along with Eastside Arts, has grown from strength to strength, in particular in recent years. Um, and the member will also know, because I know he's been very, very supportive and in fairness to him, he's been very firm and genuine in his approach to ensure that East Belfast receives some support. I think one of the best stories that it has, apart from Val Morrison, which I'm sure the member will mention, but certainly the whole C.S. Lewis narrative and its association with that part of the city, I have supported it and I will continue to do so. Sir Douglas, for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. President, for that um, Again, the Minister um, today attended the unveiling of the, the C.S. Lewis 
um, portrait and, and indeed Seamus Heaney. Um, again, um, would the Minister agree that that is the sort of image that we need to be projecting um, from Strom here, a very positive Im image, um, which, if any ideas, might maybe expanding this um, to bring in the likes of um, the late George Best, whose tenth anniversary of his untimely death uh, happens tomorrow? Well, certainly I'm, I'm open, as a member will know, I'm, I'm open to suggestions that actually provide a space uh, and a legacy for citizens right across the north here. I, I picked up on the member's point that it's the first two portraits that are non-parliamentarians, and I think that sends out a good message. Um, but I also think it's good because both Seamus Heaney and the C.S. Lewis books, and indeed all the work and the story around it, I think have provided inspiration for other people engaged in the arts come behind them. And the more people come up this building, and there are many, and that's a good thing, that see ordinary people who have done extraordinary things for us uh, acknowledged in these halls, I think the better. Call Mr. Tom Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can the Minister advise why there was such a delay in the publication of a consultation uh, document on a strategy for the arts and culture? Well, certainly I make no apologies for the fact that I brought it forward yesterday. I think it's a good thing. I want to make sure that the consultation is done right. I wanted to make sure that the document, uh, in conjunction with the great work that the Ministerial Advisory Forum on Arts, and certainly with D. D Collins and Art, the Arts Council, uh, was, was given the attention it needed. I believe the consultation and the way in which it was brought forward yesterday, and by the way, it closed on the 12th of February, will give many people an opportunity. And I would encourage the member, and indeed all members across this House, to try and get people from his constituency to feed into the consultation for the future. Mr. Buchanan, for a supplementary. Yeah, I hear what the Minister says, but does the Minister not accept that with the closing date of the 12th of February, some six to eight weeks uh, to consider the responses, there is the potential for this to run out of time, no strategy in place, uh, which is but another failing of the Minister and her department? Well, if the member feels uh, failed in my department, it's the first time I've heard it, but uh, I accept that he's, he's reading from a, uh, a question that was put into his hand probably by his colleagues, so he probably isn't aware of what I do in my department, because I don't receive a lot of correspondence from him. But nonetheless, uh, I don't accept the member's assertions. I believe that the consultation is an opportunity for people in his constituency, if he is interested, in feeding into a robust and strong arts and cultural strategy for 10 years. That ends the period of questions to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. As the next period of questions does not begin until 3.30, I suggest the House takes its A's until then.